Emma McKeon to the men's relay team, but also congratulations to the amazing Australian public. Almost 1.1 million vaccinations in the last week. Uh, to be precise, uh, 1,085,914 vaccinations. And to look at that in context, only five weeks ago, uh, we were uh, uh, at approximately uh, 725,000 vaccinations. A week ago, uh, we were uh, uh, at uh, just over 980,000 vaccinations. And uh, this week, uh, 1,085,000 vaccinations, so almost uh, 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million vaccinations. So Australians are stepping forward in record numbers, a record week, and uh, that's, I think, a fitting uh, step forward, but there's more work to be done. Uh, to put all of this in, uh, in context, uh, six of the last seven days were daily records for uh, that day in the week. That's important because there is a pattern, and what we see is if those individual days continue to increase, that's more Australians coming forward for more vaccinations. Uh, the total national vaccinations includes uh, uh, 70,936 in the last 24 hours, but significantly, that means we're now at uh, 11.2 million vaccinations in Australia. So 11.2 million vaccinations in Australia. And uh, what does that mean across the population? It means that we've had 3.3 uh, million Australians with first vaccinations. Uh, we've had uh, 7.8 million Australians, or 38% of Australians, uh, uh, sorry, 3.3 uh, million Australians with double doses. Uh, and 7.8 million Australians who've had uh, their first vaccination. Uh, what we also know uh, is that uh, in terms of the over 50s, 62.5%, significantly for the over 60s, we've now passed 70% at 70.3%, and for the over 70s, 77.2% of Australians have been vaccinated. So 38% first vaccination rate, 16.3% uh, second vaccination rate. That is following very quickly. Um, and then uh, what we've seen as well, I think, and very importantly, uh, is that uh, the states have delivered 4.9 million vaccines and the Commonwealth 6.3 million vaccines, and our GPs uh, just over 5.8 million uh, vaccinations. So they've been the real backbone of the program, but everybody is pitching in. Uh, in terms of uh, other critical steps forward, uh, we know around the country with regards to COVID, uh, in the last uh, 24 hours, 165 cases, of which uh, eight were overseas acquired and 157 local. Uh, we're seeing very good progress in uh, Victoria and South Australia. Um, we are hopeful about the uh, situation in each of those states. I would say we are on track, uh, as the Victorians have said, uh, to see a uh, significant movement to, to give people greater freedom over the course of this week. But that's been the hard work of, uh, of Australians. In New South Wales, there's more work to be done, but people in Sydney are doing an extraordinary job. Uh, they're overwhelmingly following the, uh, uh, the difficult, challenging restrictions and staying at home. They're coming out to be tested in record numbers. And in addition to that, uh, what we're also seeing is that uh, they're coming forward to be vaccinated in, uh, in very large numbers. Uh, over the course of the last week, as a nation, there have been a, a series of areas of, of progress. Uh, we've had uh, the uh, work from uh, the TGA, which has approved uh, Pfizer for the 12 to 15 year olds. Uh, that will now go and is being considered by the Australian Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation. We're expecting over the course of this week uh, a uh, decision with regards to the immunocompromised uh, kids or kids with underlying medical conditions. And if that's uh, a yes, then we'll move immediately to add, add them to uh, phase 1B, which would mean immediate access. And then they'll consider the international evidence which is emerging over the course of uh, the coming months with regards to the broad population of children 12 to 15. Um, we've also been able to secure the 85 million uh, boosters over the, uh, the coming two years, a very important part of the short, medium and long-term strategy with regards to COVID. So we already have 40 million uh, uh, Pfizer that are expected to arrive and that are on track to arrive this year, uh, plus the 10 million Novavax. We have the 
Uh, uh, ten, uh, plus the uh, 10 million Moderna this year. Next year, another 15 million Moderna. But then we'll have uh, significant supplies uh, for the next two years of Pfizer, um, pending all of the different possible outcomes in relation to boosters. Um, and in addition to that, there's the 51 million Novavax. So those are very important developments. And then, of course, the last is pharmacies. And the opening up of that uh, the pharmacy program uh, is continuing and expanding. Uh, we will have 251 pharmacies on board around Australia this week. That will increase shortly to 470. And over the course of uh, August, uh, over uh, 3,900 pharmacies are qualified. They'll make their own decisions as to if they wish to come on board and if so, when. Uh, subject to the supply, but that will see a significant expansion. And this week, uh, over 5,690 Commonwealth points of presence um, and uh, over 800 state points of presence for vaccination. So the message is very clear. Uh, please come forward and be vaccinated. Vaccination, as we know, can save lives and protect lives. And I want to thank all of the Australians uh, who have come forward, the nearly 1.1 million, We've done that in the last week. And uh, what we know from this is that uh, Australians are coming forward. If you are eligible for your first dose, please come forward. If you're due for your second dose, please come forward. Happy to uh, take questions. I'll start with those on the phone and then come to Dana in the room. Um, Majura. Oh, no, to be fair, uh, these are increasing vaccinations right across the nation. And so, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the vaccination rates are released every day. And uh, what we're seeing is uh, significant rates right across the country. Obviously, someone will always be si uh, higher and someone will be uh, at another point. But all of the states and territories are vaccinating. But uh, it is critical that we have as many people come forward as soon as possible. So no matter where you are in the country, this disease can strike you. Um, it is a global pandemic. And uh, whilst uh, we have as a country been overwhelmingly protected for so much of it, we're facing challenges, particularly in New South Wales now, but no state or territory is immune. No state or territory is immune. So all of the states and territories are seeing this vaccination program. Uh, I do want to hi highlight one interesting example of what we can do um, as a nation. Uh, the highest single uh, rate of vaccination by any jurisdiction in any particular age group is the ACT, where uh, over 94% of over 70s have been vaccinated. Um, it says what may be possible. That's not to set a a particular uh, goal or target, but it shows that in one age group, in one jurisdiction, um, given the access and given the motivation, um, in an area which has had, uh, frankly, very, very low cases over the course of uh, the entire pandemic, uh, we're seeing the highest particular vaccination rate by demographic in the, uh, in the country. Uh, Eliza from uh, Channel 9. Well, I think what's absolutely critical here is that we continue to follow the medical advice. And one of the things that's uh, happened in Australia is that we have prioritised the medical advice, and that's what's kept us safe as a nation. And uh, so I respect uh, absolutely the position of the medical advisors, uh, the Australian Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation. The important message which comes out of the TAGI's revised advice for people in Sydney is that people of all ages uh, have a clear message from a TAGI that the benefits of AstraZeneca outweigh the risks. That's a decision of a TAGI 
uh, in relation to the Sydney outbreak and the benefits outweigh the risks for all ages. And so I think that that is a very important message. And so our, our job is to uh, make sure that uh, the vaccines are available in Sydney right now. Uh, AstraZeneca is uh, available across uh, general practices and Commonwealth vaccination clinics and the uh, New South Wales government, and we thank them for this, is stepping up their work uh, through their own clinics. And so these things are very important and more and more pharmacies are, are coming online. So the simple answer is uh, we deal with any of the misinformation. Uh, there are uh, you know, uh, people who put out uh, false uh, information with regards to vaccines, and frankly, I condemn it in the same way that I condemn the protests on the uh, on the weekend because uh, they were dangerous. Um, where they were in breach of state public health orders, they were frankly endangering people. Okay, Sarah. Sure, so uh, with regards to the booster strategy, we have uh, at this point in time three vaccines. Uh, so we have uh, 85 million uh, vaccines uh, from Pfizer, and that's 60 million in 2022 and 25 million in 2023. Uh, we also have uh, 15 million Moderna, uh, which have uh, have uh, been ordered and we're very confident with the uh, delivery time frame. So that's 10 million Moderna for the first round vaccinations this year and another 15 million for the booster strategy next year. And then we have 51 million, uh, we have 51 million Novavax subject to uh, registration, but we have to say the clinical trial results have been outstanding and very, very heartening. Uh, we are on latest advice, expecting the first of those arrivals in the final quarter of this year. So no change in any of the information with regards to Novavax. The, uh, the recent clinical trial results uh, we think were very heartening um, and uh, very, very positive. So uh, we've always thought of Novavax as there as a backup if there were an issue uh, with uh, the first three vaccines for this year and as a uh, a foundation stone and platform of the uh, booster program next year. No change in that position, uh, but at this stage the advice remains uh, the uh, final quarter of this year for the first deliveries. And uh, Natasha. Sure. Um, so with re in relation to uh, the first question, just uh, come again at that, please. Well, what we're seeing is that the utilisation rates are increasing. Uh, it's uh, over 88% across the country. And what that means also is that particularly with the GPs, uh, with AstraZeneca, we are in many situations providing two weeks of supply. Uh, and that can also be the case with, uh, with Pfizer. So uh, we'll be delivering in advance. And so they are using them over a period of weeks. Uh, and what we've seen is that those utilisation rates have increased significantly. Uh, the states on average are in the high 90s, and uh, in, in, with regards to uh, some states or territories, uh, what we're seeing is that they are, uh, they have significant rural or regional populations, such as the Northern Territory, um, so they then uh, outreach to those communities. But all the states and territories have increased their utilisation rate 
and uh, we thank them, uh, thank them for that. Uh, with regards to, uh, uh, to local government, um, at this point in time what we're doing is looking on a state-by-state -state basis. I'll leave the particular questions with regards to that uh, to, uh, uh, to the Vaccine Operations Centre. Um, uh, what we're doing is making sure and publishing the uh, state figures on a daily basis um, and uh, as the vaccine program develops, we'll have more uh, detail and more data that's available. Dana. Uh, what's your response to the comments from the WA and the NT Premiers who are angry that New South Wales is getting extra Pfizer doses from the national stockpile? Well, I think uh, the important thing is that uh, no state or territory has uh, had to have their uh, amounts reduced. Uh, what we've been able to do, and this is exactly in line with what happened with Victoria, and I believe those states and territories were supportive uh, of the additional doses to Victoria. Every state and territory is seeing a significant increase in their doses. Um, that's as the additional Pfizer has come on board now that, uh, that we've received those supplies. Uh, so every state and territory is seeing additional doses, and that's playing itself out in every state and territory having increasing outcomes. For Victoria, when they had their outbreak, we were able to provide 150,000 from unallocated doses. New South Wales, we've been able to provide 200,000 from unallocated doses. Right across the country, uh, what we're seeing uh, is an increase in all jurisdictions as the supplies have come in, receiving on a per capita basis sustained weekly increases. So can you clarify, is there a national stockpile of Pfizer? Where are these extra doses coming from? Uh, so uh, these were previously unallocated doses. Um, the first 150,000, the 50,000 is coming forward from the supplies that are arriving and all states and territories are receiving exactly the per capita amount which was pledged at the commencement of July. So what we've been able to do uh, by bringing forward these increasing doses. Um, as we know, we brought forward three million over the course. We've been able to make all of the commitments to states and territories, and this is from the additional supplies that we've been able to secure. But uh, what we have done is make sure we're not holding large amounts of doses. Uh, well, it, there's always a choice. If we were holding doses, people would say they should be out. If we aren't holding doses, people are saying, why not? The simple answer is we make sure we have uh, the second doses. Uh, we also make sure that everything that possibly can be distributed each week is distributed. So these additional doses, the 150,000 was previously from the unallocated. Uh, the extra 50,000 is from the forward supplies that are arriving. And all states and territories are receiving a per capita increase precisely in line with the figures that were sent out previously. And what do you make of your colleague George Christensen being at an anti-lockdown protest in Sydney? Should he be facing consequences from the party for that? Was he in Sydney? Uh, George Christensen. Oh, sorry, in an anti-lockdown pro protest. So there, as the Prime Minister said out, there are two things here. Uh, one is uh, an expression of views with which I disagree. I happen to disagree. And then for those that were in protests in areas against public health orders, uh, then that's obviously a breach of the state law. So those that are in protests in Sydney and, uh, uh, and in Melbourne, they have breached the law, and uh, you know, I think we should have a very strong view in relation to that. Let me finish by saying to everybody thank you. Uh, you know, a record number of weekly vaccinations, almost 1.1 million Australians, what we're seeing is that uh, each day Australians are coming forward and each day they're protecting themselves and they're protecting all other Australians. And if it is your turn uh, and you are eligible, please come forward. If you're due for your second dose, please don't wait. Thank you very much.